Apajok Deng works for a regional bank in Richmond, the capital of the U.S. state of Virginia. It's a calm and orderly life that belies the realities of a long, hard and painful journey, which started when she was five, hiding in the bushes in her home village. We could hear gunfire everywhere and people screaming, children crying. You could see some children being dropped by their parents, you know, after they got shot. And what can you do? You cannot run to go get that child. You will get killed right away. There followed two years of running and hiding and eight years of living in refugee camps like this one. At 15, Apajok arrived in the United States. She was placed with foster parents and started school. Now she's raising her own family and has a successful career at the Zenith Regional Bank in Richmond. But Abachok's thoughts are with the 2.4 million people in South Sudan who don't have a place to call home. It's different when you just hear it than when you have lived it, and I have lived it. So it's, it's hard, it's sad, it's heartbroken, you know, to know that there's human beings that have that much suffering, that is suffering that much. It's, it's, it's hard, yeah. Is that why you want to go back? Yes, that's why I want to go back and help do what I can do to help my people. Many of this generation of lost boys and girls have become accomplished professionals in the fields of business, medicine, education and even government. While working for US Congresswoman Karen Bass, David Aquath recently wrote a draft law that supports the desires of lost boys and girls to return to their homeland. So we have learned everything you needed to learn. Now the question is, should we continue to send money every year to South Sudan or should we export our skills to South Sudan? And, I, and this legislation is an answer that the best thing we can do is to export our skills to South Sudan. At first, David was optimistic about the prospects for the new nation of South Sudan, but continued conflict there has taken a personal toll, with both his mother and brother becoming victims of the conflict. But David's adamant that the solution lies with putting ethnic divisions aside. Uh, people with agricultural skills will be looking at people with healthcare background, we will be looking at uh, educators, we'll be looking at civil society, you know, we'll be looking at people who, uh, people who have uh, like uh, security training, people who can actually help train our police officers, not, they, not how to use their gun or anything like that, but how do police and community in, in, you know, intermingle. The lost boys and girls also want congressional Republicans and Democrats to put their divisions aside to approve the legislation. The lost boys and girls want Congress to act fast so that when the dust settles on this conflict that has ripped their homeland apart, they'll be ready to go and help put the pieces back together again. Daniel Wrenches, CCTV, Washington.